All right. A Grain of Evil, Investigation 1, Arkham, Massachusetts, June 30th, 1929. Responding eagerly to a telegram from your friend and mentor, you rush to the Miskatonic University Orn Library. There is a warm summer breeze gently rustling the trees, allowing the dappled sunlight to flicker lightly onto the streets. You cross the university quadrant to reach a great gothic entrance. Professor Henry Armitage, Miskatonic's erudite librarian, greets you at the polished wooden door to his office. He leans on his cane, his wrinkled face cracking into a smile. Well then, I have an interesting little problem for us to explore. It has been some time since we exercised your deductive faculties, so how about a simple mystery to get you going again? Obviously there is a chance that the events last evening involved more than a simple crime, but I do not believe that to be the case. However, after my experience of last summer, one can never be too careful. He shudders, visibly upon alluding to his confrontation with the, Wa uh, the Watleys in the village of Dunwich. Armitage settles in a chair, adjusting the violets on his desk. Inspector Garrison called over breakfast this morning and precipitated my note to your good self. It seems the inspector is at a loss and requires our specialist assistance. Last evening, as you may have noted from this morning's edition of the Arkham Advertiser, a disturbance occurred on West High Street. It was a pleasant enough evening, and at 7 o'clock the streets were relatively full. A young woman, well-dressed and of seemingly good health, collapsed on the sidewalk after emerging in a state of distress from Uptown Park. A small crowd gathered to assist the young lady. An orderly from St. Mary's Hospital and his wife stooped to receive her, and a, a policeman was found. The orderly noticed a growing crimson stain seeping on the woman's blouse. Uh, he slipped the garment free with his pocket knife, and at once the horrific nature of a wound in the lady's chest was apparent, and he stemmed the steadily increasing flow of blood. I'm happy to report the disaster was averted by his quick thinking. An ambulance arrived in good time to take her to the hospital, and they have managed to stabilize her condition. The librarian pauses to sip a coffee, uh, sip coffee from a delicate cup. The policeman is a good librarian. Let me just tell you, you right now. You would know. Oh, delicate sipper. Delicate sipper, fine cup, coffee, sticking his nose in police business. Uh, the policeman assumed this was an attack by an unknown assailant until the woman regained consciousness momentarily in the ambulance. She raved nonsensical syllables before crying out that the trees were alive, alive. Whilst dealing with the mysterious lady, the policeman was sharp-eyed enough to spot a man lingering in the crowd of onlookers. The man was acting in a furtive way, watching the proceedings with a curious detachment. He was tall, over six feet, with a, war a worn brown suit and dark hair and a distinctive birthmark under his left eye. When the policeman called out to the man, he fled the scene. Being preoccupied with the lady, the policeman was not able to pursue and noted a description in his pocketbook. Armitage sits back, the leather of his chair creaking. He steeples his fingers. The identity of both the woman and this, and this mysterious fugitive remain a mystery. It is also for us to determine if there are forces beyond the mundane at work. You'd better get going. Let Garrison's men take care of the crime scene. They do get rather protective. Before you set off, off Armitage says, remember, if you need help, come see me at my home. I'm unlikely to be in the office when working a case. So, now what you guys do is you're just going to try to come up with what happened, because there's going to be a variety of questions at the end that you're going to be graded on. And for some reason, I feel like James is going to be very good at this game. Oh, man. I'm, like, so checked out. Oh, you got this. Uh, okay. So, she collapsed. 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 On West Hyde Street there. Oh, wait. That's Derby. Hyde Street. Oh, I thought it was High... Oh, wait. West High Lane. It was West Hyde Street, right? Hyde no. Street. It was... No, it was West High Street. I heard High, but... There is. I may have It's over here. Ah, there West we go. Oh. No, West High Street. Oh, see, I was just looking. Okay. Yeah, which is also near Uptown, if I'm up to understand this correctly. Uptown is the entire bottom district. Oh. Like makes sense. this? Yeah. Uh, no, the Purple District. Purple District. So where is Uptown Park? It's in the directory. Yeah. yeah. Local culture. Churches and funerals. Transportation stores. Mm -hmm. Not in here. Arkham Directory. Oh, look at this. Look at the little Uptown. You for Uptown. We're going to be good at this, huh? Yeah. But they don't break it down as to who is... There's the, the second and the second half of the book. Yeah. Defined by type. 
Oh, interesting. Uptown Park isn't in the directory. It's errata, but it's U67. I have a may all be errata, so it should be in there somewhere, but it is U67. Oh, okay, excellent. Okay, so. So she came from here. Yeah. And then. What was in the newspaper about that? I only remember the Navy and the lady's car. Okay, so she was attacked. Yes, it's <laughs> she was attacked um, and she stabilized, but she is claiming that the trees were alive. Yeah. And um, there was some mysterious dude. No, no, but what was about the lady who. There was something about a lady in the newspaper who collapsed. Yeah. The one in Uptown Park? Yeah, yeah. did it say she was, she didn't mention anything about the raving in the newspaper. They didn't. We yeah. learned that. Yeah, that was just through him. I'm wondering, okay, what in the newspaper pertains to this case? Um, it was around 7 p.m. Okay, uh, by you got Stan. that in your notes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, was previously injured, which is the... The stabbing. We don't know if it was the stabbing. She was, she had blood. Oh, it was tree stab. Yeah, it was one, yeah. Um... She went to St. Mary's Hospital. Okay. The guy who found her was an orderly there at that hospital, and he saved her life. The guy who found her on West High Street. Yeah. Um, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? So, for example, if you want to go to St. Mary's Hospital, you find it in the directory. Because these are all just numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have no idea where they are. You need to tell us where we're going. Or, so then if you guys say, I want to go to St. Mary's Hospital, you find it, and then tell me the numbers, and then I'll look it up in the book to see if there's something there. <laughs> or should we go to Uptown? Rotary Park? Club. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of misprinting. Yeah, I remember this. you telling me that. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think we should start by investigating the woman and the orderly, or do you think we should go to the park first? Uh, no, the woman first, I guess. What do you think, Jane? Park. She's ranting and raving that the trees were alive. That was when she had just been attacked. Yeah. So you think that she still might be unconscious? I'm worried that someone might get to her if we wait too long in the hospital. I don't know how this game works, but if I was concerned about someone who might not be in, who is in obscenely good health, but still is at a hospital, has been attacked once already, is there, I want to go and speak to her. Is there any, and there's no penalty, like we could just travel here to here to there, there's so, no penalty as long as we don't. There's time, Yeah. You, so you can limit a visit number of locations, yeah. and the number of location, unique locations you visit yeah. will also have an But score. there's no, like, there's no penalty if we go next door or across the map. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's just what I wanted to make sure. Because otherwise I'd say we're goddamn starting at the park. <laughs> it's a game that doesn't allow for time change. It actually does allow for time change. Not in this one. You're not affected by time, but in later scenarios you are. Okay. Interesting. Um, fuck, I guess. Do you guys want to go to St. Mary's Hospital then? That's yeah. a law firm, isn't it? Uh, graveyard? St. Mary's Hospital? It's definitely a graveyard. Yeah, that's where they put all the dead people. <laughs> They're not a very good hospital. Mary's Teaching Hospital. C11. C11. So how it works is this ticks down. You only write down the location, Erica. There's an encounter there. Okay. C11. There is one. Armitage often mentions his friend, Dr. Vincent Sutton, as being a useful point of contact at the hospital. And you ask for the doctor at the front desk. The stern administration assistant frowns your request, but dispatches a message to Sutton all the same. After you wait for what seems like an age, Dr. Sutton appears and greets you in a detached and professional manner. He is in his mid-forties, and his clean-shaven head amplifies the size of his thick, horn-rimmed glasses. He allows a cursory nod when you tell him the reason for your visit. Of course, Armitage told me to expect you, he says. You explain that you're investigating the mysterious case of the woman brought into the hospital after her collapse at the park. It's not my case, but let's head up to the ward and see what we can find out. Sutton leads you through the white halls, weaving in and out of the foot traffic. On the way up, he asks whether Armitage has expressed interest in the lights dancing around at the nearby Emperor home. Some of the hospital workers have seen them, and the old building is supposed to be abandoned. When you tell him that Armitage hasn't mentioned it, the doctor shrugs. You arrive at Ward 6, and Dr. Sutton makes his way down a row of beds, stopping at the foot of one containing an attractive young woman. The woman is sleeping soundly, and Sutton lifts the chart from the end of the bed and consults the notes. We still don't have her name. She is listed here as Jane Doe. Strange. The wound in her chest was deep, likely created by a sharp blade cutting into the flesh. 
However, five of the upper ribs on the left side were also fractured during her incident. It's as though someone removed or was attempting to remove something from her chest cavity. Most unusual. Dr. Noyes conducted the surgery to res reset the bones. Speaking of unusual, Noyes cleared away a good deal of brownish colored mucus from the wound. He sent a sample to the lab. The lab assistant was sent to the university library to consult medical treatises as they were unsure um, to what the substance consisted. Pascal knows about the strange things as well. As Sutton ends his speech, a nurse arrives to administer a shot. No sooner than is the needle withdrawn from the woman's arm, she thrashes in her bed. Sutton doesn't look concerned and he pats the nurse on the shoulder. The discomfort will quickly pass. Then, shockingly, the woman's eyes open and she screams a piercing shriek. Sutton calls for help as the woman raves madness, spittle dripping from her chin. Only at, bay, only at Bayfriars, but not there. The trees, why are they walking? Edward, where is my Edward? Why is, the trees have eyes? Edward, we were supposed to meet at the bell. Why are we here? Edward, it hurts Edward, stop it, stop it. Sutton steps in and holds the woman's shoulders, talking to her in a calm, soothing voice. After a few minutes of delirium, the woman slips into a peaceful rest. She's really been through the mill, Sutton says. The wound will heal just fine given time. However, as you've seen firsthand, there are some scars that are beyond her ability to repair. You've learned all you can from the good doctor. Her effects were taken for examination by the police. I think they were taken over to the criminologist, Dr. Corbin. Please let me know if you discover her identity. I'd like to contact family members. She needs someone to look after her. She said the trees walked to the Bayfriars. Just, yeah. Trees walked? She said, why are the trees walking and only there at the Bayfriars? I didn't hear the Bayfriars in this episode. I can reread parts too if you need. Oh, you're, you are allowed to reread parts? Yep. Uh, only at Bayfriars, but no, not there. The trees, why are they walking? So it just starts with only at Bayfriars, but no, not there. Only at Bayfriars, but no, not there. So? Edward might be that dude. Yeah. Yeah. Let's... And we know that the stabbing was... Deep, likely a blade. But there was also a brownish fluid that Dr. Noise went to the university for info for. Is that Noise or Noise? Dr. Noise. N-O-Y-E-S. Okay, do we want to go talk to this... Noise. Okay, we can talk to Noise. Sorry. That's all good. We can talk to Noise. We can talk to Corbin, the police guy, about the effects. Or we can go to the lab, or we can go to the police station. Now, me personally, again, this is based on nothing to do with the game mechanically. I feel like we'd get more valuable information out of visiting homes, people at home, more than we would visiting a location. They're more likely to talk about weird shit in a home than they would be. Mm. So of note, that big uh, list of names that you have over there, Eric, are general people that are safe bets more often than not, and usually will have something related to the, uh, the thing. Police chief. Corbin. So Vincent oh, Sutton was already someone we spoke to. Yeah. So then they also talked about like the cops there. Pascal Fenton, the occult <laughs> expert, is there. Uh, Kate uh, Kisaurus. And is that Dr. Corbin? Corbett? Yeah. Corbin. 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 Yeah. Corbin. Corbin. Okay. Corbin. Is our local uh, criminologist. So he was the fellow who they sent to. They sent her stuff to. Uh, fuck the people. Let's check out the mucus. I'm not gonna lie, I'm X-filing this shit up, and I want to know what that mucus is about. Thank you, Mulder. I I'm, I'm expecting as much as well, actually. But I'd like that confirmed, because yeah. I'm thinking a tree did stab her if they're moving. Or something she thinks was a tree. But if we already know that it was a tree, wouldn't it be easier to skip that step? But we don't know it was a tree. And we should confirm it, because if we go off assuming... Okay, if we're X-filing this... We have crazy ideas, but we also need to scully this and science the hell out of it. And as you guys um, know, because this is taking place in a fictional world, weird stuff could happen. Yeah. yeah. Especially because this is taking place in a Lovecraft world, so. True. Yeah. There Fuck, is I can't wait till it's just a serial killer. It's just the mole face serial killer. I'm here to stab people. Hi. Ah. There's actually no way to solve it. The serial killer always gets away. That's 
Dun, dun, dun. Um, yeah, let's go check out the sap. The sap. And that's so that was at the... Corbett. Uh, he has it over there. Because he's a... Did Corbett have it? Yeah, that's who he sent it to. I thought that was her step. He sent it to... Oh! He sent it to some place. Noise? Her effects were taken to Corbett. Yeah. Dr. Noise did the surgery. Oh. And they removed the yellow stuff and sent it somewhere. They sent it to... A lab assistant to the University Library. University Library. Okay, University Library is our contact... Um, nope. Where is the University Library? Not listed in my name. Maybe it's not... The University Laundry and Steam Plant? Away we go. Yellow Eye Master, I think it's under the follow. Welcome to the goddamn table. Orn Library, C23, is where I want to go. What do you guys think? Which C23. one? C23. You want to go where? Why? Because that's where they sit, a lab assistant at the library. Is that where it, it goes? Yeah, right? That's what they said. Oh, uh, yeah, they said University Library. And that's Orn Library? Or is that the university? University is the, uh, the Orn Library. Yeah, so okay. University, Miskatonic U, Orn Library is under here. Let's go there because. Can I not do... show them this? You can show them that. Okay. We do have a contact there. Her name is Emilia Sergant. Emilia Sergant? Spell Wait, that, that last name familiar. for me. Wait, that's familiar. S E R G A N T. Oh, just as it sounds, Sergant. It's actually Sergeant. I think you have a misprint in that book. Sergant. There's a lot in this game. It adds Sergei? to the challenge. Emilia Sergan? This was before Shakespeare, right? A so lot of people who have a job won't be won't have a house on this. So she like yeah. Yeah, but I can go to Sears. That's not a house. Go to w Sears, yeah. Yeah, Westside Sears. You said you saw, you thought you saw her name? Um they must have mentioned it Emilia somewhere else. Wait. The name Emilia rings a bell. Was she the woman who was going out with that guy who worked at St. Mary's Hospital? Um, I actually can't go back to that yeah. point, but I can if you want, just because it's your first. No, no, don't. Let's sure. Let's go with our mistakes. Let's mark down a note that says maybe she's going out with the guy who went to St. Mary's Hospital. They might be connected. Alright, uh, so we're going to the university? I would like to. C23. You guys want to go C23? I think so. C-23, you come across Miss Sargent amongst the stacks in the Orne Library. Don't tell me old Armitage has got you working on a Sunday, she says with a grin. What is it you need from our repository today? You explain the nature of your visit and your request is met with a curious look. It's funny you should say that because the hospital has been working on something that came out of a patient. I've had to move on to some of our more esoteric volumes after I drew a blank. Come on, I'll show you what I've got up to. Miss Sargent leads you to a narrow flight up a narrow flight of stairs through a door marked restricted no entry and into the restricted reading room. The librarian crosses to a heavy reading table made of solid oak and shows you an ancient tome resting there. This is the dreaded De, uh, De Vermis Mysterious, written by the German von Prin. I'm working on a translation in my spare time. Her finger wavers over a page, shaking nervous, nervously. Here the book speaks about a mucus residue being a byproduct of a ritual sacrifice. The book also speaks of the guardians of a dark, dark ritual, horrible monsters called the Dark Young of Shub Niggurath. Hold on, I know another book that references these things. How well, do you, oh sorry. No, I'll show you. Literally how you would think. We call, them, we call her Shubby. Yeah. 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 Shubbies. Yeah. Or Shub. Yeah. I like Shub better actually. No, Shub's too close to Gug. Oh, the my librarian, dad's dead. <laughs> the librarian moves to the shelf and helps, hefts another tome down with the title Ibon embossed in gold upon its spine. She flips gently through the pages. Here is a story of the creatures called the Dark Young of Shub Niggurath about a Teutonic knight in the 12th century who led a band of villagers into battle against the evil living in the forest. Ever their praises and abundance to the black goat of the woods. Iya Shub Niggurath, Iya Shub Niggurath, the black goat of the woods with a thousand young. The shubs are the height of four men. Uh, let's see, this text roughly translates. They're able to stand perfectly still and lurk in the shadows of trees as if blending, waiting upon its prey and attacking with tentacles that sprout from their heads. Miss Sergeant pauses, hand over her mouth. 
Well, they sound frankly disgusting. I assume this is a variation on the Grendel myth from the Beowulf saga. Okay, how tall are they? Uh, four men. Four men. So they're tree things. They're tree monsters. Tree no, no, monsters no. are attacking people. They're not tree monsters. Well, they can hide like trees. Hide in the trees. Do I have to be our skelly? No. Does this have minis? Can I ask him a question? I need a token so I know where I am. C23, I'm your token. Can I ask him a question? She can't answer, she can only read what's in the book. Uh, okay. I wanted to know how she was going to uh, catalog something that she herself was translating. Was she going to list herself as author as a library, or was she going to assume that that was part of her duties? Uh, she says, why are you talking to me about this? She says, <laughs> 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 Okay, give me a second. I just wanted to know what they did in 1929. It actually could be really useful. Uh, okay, okay. So, there was an ancient German tome, and... Wait, this is 1929? Interesting that they have a university library designed this way. Anyways, please continue. I know, when they were like, send it off to the lab, I'm like, what are you going to look at? Yeah, exactly. It's a fantasy world. If I know my library history, something doesn't smell right here. I'm beginning to suspect Amelia. Um, anyway, German book, byproduct, uh, ritual, sacrifice. And then the shoves attacked her? I'm thinking so, because they can stand like trees, so she thinks the trees they walk. Mm -hmm. The shoves absolutely attack. But her. that would mean that somebody was trying... Wait, what? Someone was trying to do a ritual sacrifice on her. Is the ritual sacrifice <clears throat> to get rid of the shoves? Is that... What did it say about it? Uh, it just said it was a ritual sacrifice. A byproduct of a ritual sacrifice. Yeah, byproduct of a ritual sacrifice, yeah. I hate when people sacrifice rituals. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for at least <clears throat> Yeah, the mucus residue being a byproduct of ritual sacrifice also speaks of guardians of occult ritual, horrible monsters called the Dark Young of Shabby. Oh, okay. So it's just a byproduct. So it's the Dark Young specifically that stand that way, not Shub himself. Herself. herself. Itself. itself. So, it, okay, these guys are these things. And they are a byproduct of a ritual. They oh no, no the, the, the sap the the, the mucus the is mucus a byproduct. Is the... <laughs> we have this ritual to summon Satan, but it's got some demons as a nasty byproduct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so someone tried to do a ritual sacrifice. I want to go back here to the park. I want to go to the park. Yeah. It would be the next. What we we have to, we need to track down the cultists and what was happening there. We need to track down this guy we think might be Edward. So again, oh. we can still talk hold to on, hold on. Cor Wait, yeah, Corporal. Yeah, why don't we go talk to Corbett? Corbett. Because then we can get the information and see if we can find out who Edward is. Because oh, I'm that's an excellent idea. also thinking about this slightly as a game. As it is. Yes. As I, it do. I feel like. Like, Once we go there, it's no longer called the Unvisited Isle. I'd like to ruin that right now. Oh, there's something about the Unvisited Isle. If we go there, it's now visited. That's um, the thing. You go, are, but you never come back. Ooh, there are illicit activities going on on the Unvisited Isle. Yeah, probably has something that I can do. Corbin? Let me see your notes. Terrible. Oh, I can't read. Do we want to? <laughs> do we want to? We don't actually want to go to the Invisible Dial, but man, I hate the fact that it's called that. Um, okay, trees are alive. Shoves. Shoves. No, it's the dark young. What? Is what? Yeah, shoves. Okay, dark. The dark young of shoves. Like... I'm just trying to connect the dots here. I'm making my serial killer storyboard here. Yeah. Okay. Six foot, warm brown suit, birthmark under eye, dark hair, uptown park, Mary's Hospital, Amelia Sargent. Sutton lights at Emperor Home. Oh, just because the doctor mentioned it and it's in the paper. Yeah. 
And what does it say in the paper? Um, would the owners of the Emperor home be sure to secure the property as workers from the hospital have seen lights on the third floor? And we have had that mentioned twice now in the story. Did it we? sounds like, well, yeah, because the doctor also mentioned, has Armitage sent you guys to take a look? Oh, and this would have been the first instance of us hearing I about it. I don't necessarily think it is connected. Could be a wild goose chase. So where do you? Because if you it is it? connected, cultists. If it isn't connected, it's a wild goose chase. Obviously, so I just want to make sure. Uh, Jane Doe, wound sharp, fractured ribs. Where did something you think was trying we should to go. Bay Corbett. fires. Corbett. Yeah, I agree. I feel we do. Yeah, I feel we need to find out about him. I think we should all. Well, Corbett's but, the one who has her stuff, right? Yeah, Corbett's only has her stuff. So, but right like now she's our only lead to Edward. But yeah. we literally have no idea who Edward is. We just, one of us, not me, mentioned maybe it's this guy. And I was just like, yeah, that could make sense. So, we do need to figure that out. But at the same time, I feel like there's a little more information to be gained. Oh, whatever. Let's go to Corbett's. Uh, Corbett should be on the back of the book. Eric, if you want to give me Corbett's location. I would be happy to. Cor Did you Corbett, D45. Thank you. You rap on the door to Herbert Corbett's lab, and after a moment, you are greeted by his helper. He recognizes you and shows you through to Corbett's workroom. The workroom is a, workroom is a chemistry lab with several Bunsen burners blazing away. Herbert is huddled over a bench. On his head, he wears a magnifying apparatus, which he lifts to greet you. Welcome to my criminology laboratory. Oh, you made head. him a bitch. Sensing that this man is kept very busy, you don't waste any time with pleasantries and ask about the woman attacked in Uptown Park. And he oh. hates us for it, because oh. he really likes pleasantries. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a strange one. I believe that I can shed some light on her lodging, if nothing else. Corbin reveals a brown cardboard box. Garrison left these for me to examine. The blouse, as you can see, is saturated with blood from a wound made in her chest. I was interested to note that the blouse was not damaged before she was administered first aid. This suggests that the blouse was put on the woman after the injury occurred. More revealing is the lady's purse, which contains an address. Here, he rummages in the box. This is a bill from Rennie's boarding house, and a receipt confirming that she had paid for next month's rent in advance. There is also a receipt from a bookstore. The bookstore says, the bookstore receipt says, Meredith's used books. Three dollars received with thanks for Coleridge's collected poems to be inscribed on the inside cover with To Edward, with all my love, signed M. The letter M. I suppose to answer M. This is over here for you if you want to. Margaret. Marjorie. Maggie. <laughs> Maleficent. Justin never needs to do that voice again. This is Corbett's and voice and only Corbett's voice. Yeah. Mer Meredith used books for the bookstore. Do we want to go through everything again just to make sure that you caught it all? Uh, sure. Oh, oh, look. Uh, blast blood, put on after stab, Rennie's boarding house, Meredith's bookstore. To Edward, all my love. She got it. Uh, nailed it. One month. Yeah, one month paid. Paid. Okay, so she was here for the long term. Mm-hmm. Uh, ba ba You guys want to go to the bookstore or do you want to go to the boarding house? Don't forget, we still have the park we can go to. Okay. I want to go to the bookstore. No. Okay. You were going to say? Go for it. No. Like, okay. I would say go to the boarding house because then we can ask. Well, I don't know if they'd let us in, but like then we can see if there's. And they might also have met Edward, especially yeah. if she was in love with him and getting him gifts. They might be able to give us some direction as to where he is, or he might be waiting there for her. I want to go to the bookstore and see if they got her name. Um, from M. Oh, instead of just being like, yeah. Oh, you know that lady that got stabbed? Did she live here? That's what I want to do. See if they got the name. What are our other clues that are currently pointing towards Edward? We don't know. We need to figure out who Edward is. There's nothing actually pointing towards him. She just talks about him, okay, and he comes up. Back, Edward. At if we ever have to, like, actually Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys some shit up, Laura, I would really like you on my team. You guys are doing a lot better than Mitch, Mike, and Julie did. They never visited the victim. 
<laughs> like, I don't care. No. Um, Uptown Park. Edward was there. What else about him? Um, we don't know who was at Uptown Park. Well, we know somebody was there. Dark hair, watching from the distance. But she, when she was like talking in her... Edward, help. Like, or whatever. Yeah, uh, that hurts. Like, Edward, stop. Exactly. Yeah. So it's implied that he was there. Yeah, and it's implied that he may have even been involved in the injury. Yes. Implied. I know. That's why I'm putting a maybe beside it. A maybe. Um, birthmark under I. We don't know that that's Edward. Fine, I'll put a question mark next to it. <laughs> that's um, what we're trying to figure out is if this fucker is Edward. We're trying to figure out her name and if this fucker fine. is Edward. Because we need to find Edward and be like, what the fuck happened? I think, I think we should go to the bookstore if you'd like, but I do think the boarding house is going to hold more clues for us, potentially. I can't... If she was going to get a secret gift for him... She wouldn't necessarily have brought him to that bookstore. I'm not. I'm literally. We I think the only information there is her name. So when we go to the boarding house, we can ask oh, her name. Oh, oh God, yeah. Yes. Oh. Excellent idea. Wait, are we allowed to take the? Wait, I don't know if that's part of it, but can we take like the book with us to give to the librarian? So that's not how this works. It's generally <laughs> assumed that like you can have the information and visit a location. Oh, okay. Uh, even if you go to one out of order, you actually... This one doesn't have requirements. They slowly add more stuff. This is kind of just like an introduction to mm -hmm. it. Very fair. Yeah. But some might not have the answers to other questions, right? So if you feel like you need to go to the book before the boarding house, because you feel like you'll learn her name before you go find out where she lives, that might have an impact on how the, the story plays, like the questions play out. Very fair. Um, I assume you guys had already solved the mystery by day one evening, so we're just going to not worry about it anymore. We uh, know what we, the mystery is. I Edward. think we were about here. Nice. You were, we were somewhere like in these four. I'm How do we know when we've it. like solved? So the question we're asked is... You don't know if it's solved. You basically just have to decide if you go to the limit or you feel like you can answer the questions but you do not know what they are. Oh, so like when we're like, we got some, we got some stuff. Yes, you kind of just have to be like, let's try it. Oh, I kind of just want to call it here and see. I don't recommend it. You can answer two questions, I think, so far. Yeah, but I just want to fudge the rest and see if I beat it like I did school. That happened to us with one of them. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so we want to go to the bookstore first, huh? Bookstore. Bookstore. I need the location. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 this is the loading music. <laughs> Man, I hate 1929. Because Meredith used books? Yeah. Meredith used books. M50. Oh, they don't even know what's about to happen. Because it's June. Wait. Yeah. Did the stock market crash in October, right? Yeah. yeah. The stock market didn't hit Arkham. Didn't touch it. That's what the murder M50. is for. M50. And the door to Meredith's used books is locked. Unabashed, you try knocking and are rewarded with a few moments by a friendly large man in a sharp tweed suit. His gray hair is thinning, but his eyes twinkle with a youthful Yeah, I'm look. Meredith. You explain your reason for stopping by. He takes the receipt from you and turns it over in his hands. Yes, definitely one of ours. Come for a moment, won't you? I'll check the ledger. Mr. Meredith leads you inside the musty-smelling shop. Shelves cover every wall and groan under the weight of the uh, printed literature. He smartly rounds the counter and pulls out a worn book. Flipping through the several pages, his fingers scan the columns of names with practiced ease. Yes, here we are. Coleridge collected poems to be inscribed in calligraphy with a personal message. We charge two fifty to the young lady. Um, yes, Martha is her name. Boom! And Edward is her betrothed. Edward Hartwell. Betrothed? Hartwell. 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 Spelling? Hartwell. <laughs> Hard to imagine this investigators is mess like, oh, sure, no problem. <laughs> Hard to <laughs> <laughs> like that this is actually what happens. Yeah. You quickly thank Mr. Meredith and leave. Hartwell sounds familiar too. I mean, yes, just... Hartwell did come up somewhere in here. Hartwell. Oh, it wouldn't be an international. It wouldn't be. So... President Hoover. That's Hartwell, right? No, I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> um, are you I reckon. While they're looking, look for like, for example, the boarding house if you ever wanted to go there. I don't even know if that'd be under. Uh, it's Rennie's boarding house. You can probably find Rennie's. it alphabetically under R. Washburn! <laughs> Mike! Caitlin! Washburn! Washburn! There's 
How do you spell Washburn? There's a few Washburns Don't be afraid here. to go through it much more slowly, honestly. Okay. Whenever I skim, I always miss things. Rambo! You're not helping, James. Yeah, I am. No, That's okay. Are. You're I can important. just do this. I'm, I'm weeding out leads here. <laughs> you guys want to go to the Rotary Club? Oh, man, your voice pierces. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tried to warn you. The start to every fight. <laughs> um, there's a Gladys Brockwell. I'm sure we read a Hartwell. I'm sure too. Did we just forget it? No, there's we didn't. No Hartwell in there. There's no Hartwell. I'm trying to remember. We just City time. imagined the whole thing. Or we had a glimpse into the divine. Almost, let me just look, because there's only... Don't look right, there's only... Did you add this R? No. Oh, I don't know who did. Maybe Travis did. All right, where do you guys want to go now? You guys want to go to the boarding house now? Yeah. There's no hardware on there. F-16. Whoosh. One second, Eric. Sorry. Eric? No, just wait. Just to make sure there's a... We've had events at all of them. So yeah, far. but you could possibly... So don't write yeah. down. Screw it up. Yeah. An F-16 is a fighter jet. Oh... The three-story clapperboard house on Lich Street is neat and presentable. Um, all small, a small sign advertises that Rennie's Barton House has vacant rooms. Rooms, sorry. You are greeted at the front desk by one of the Rennie twins, Thomas, a friendly man in his 30s with a mop of dark hair. Are you wanting to rent a room? I don't know why everyone's British. <laughs> you describe the woman in the hospital who was, at the, uh, who was attacked, explaining that she had a receipt for payment for one of these rooms. Well, that sounds like very much like Martha Modine. Fuck! She has been with us for over a year now. I believe she works over on Main Street in one of the stores. I do hope she is okay. She's got a kind heart, always willing to do a kindness for a stranger. She's smitten as well, having recently fallen in love with a man named Mr. Hartwell. Don't care for him too much, surely. Eyes makes my, dark, my dogs bark every time he is around. My dogs never bark. Clearly young Martha can see redeeming, qual redeeming qualities, I suppose. You ask if you may see Martha's room, and he agrees, striding past you, brandishing sure. a passkey. A woman's privacy means nothing in 1929! <laughs> um, Martha's room is modest, but well-kept, and pleasantly decorated. On a small bookcase, there are several works of poetry. A photograph in the, a frame on the mantel catches your eye. You walk over and examine it. It is the picture of a lady and a gentleman, and there can be no doubt that this is the woman that Armitage described, and you saw. Uh, the couple gazing, gazes lovingly at one another with that faraway dreaming look of a movie romance. The man has a small birthmark under his left eye. Oh! It's confirmed, Mulder! Oh, we word. scullied it, okay? Thomas says that's them, Martha and Hartwell, though he looks as though butter wouldn't melt his mouth, unlike her. You ask for more information on Hartwell, and Rennie tells you that Hartwell's been seeing Martha for several weeks, and that he has house on Lower South Side on East Sultanstall Street. Sorry, lower South East. Well, so lower South Side, East Sultan Stall Street. Did we get the name of the poetry she loves? Cool Ridge. Cool Ridge, thanks, man. Cool Ridge? He's, cool. Already, he's already cataloged it. Mountain Dew, Cool Ridge. Man, <laughs> you are. I just need to catalog how my brain works. That's, no, that's very. <laughs> Dorito good. flavors. Um, Dorito. Should we visit Edward or should we visit her work? But we don't know where Wait, she Wait, okay, so mechanically, Justin, yeah. the doctor said he'd love to know who she is because she's Jane Doe. You can't go back there in this one. There's, there's no reason to go back and tell him okay. in this yeah. one um, because there's no um, requirement cards, which unlock in a later one. Okay, okay, yeah. just wanted to make sure mechanically. In this one, there's no point in going back to yeah. him. Yeah, he's dead. I wasn't sure if Jane Doe would be like, oh, you found out her name is Martha. Well, now she's not catatonic anymore. Yeah. Should we and go? for the majority of stuff, assume that you tell him that in the resolution. Okay. Yeah. If he lives that long. Fucking <laughs> hair. <laughs> um, do we want to hit up Edward? Yeah. Who doesn't? Go. Yeah. I still really want to go to the... Wait, can I have the red pen? Part? I just want to mark off yeah. who we visited. Okay. I've, I've been writing it down. Just so I can, like... Oh, yeah, no, please, do your note thing. So we saw Dr. Vincent Sutton, and he was, oh, the doc, the St. Mary's Hospital guy? 
Yeah. But we'll do this. Just write in yourself with the directory. Because I'm memorizing it. I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> I was even going to make the joke first. Is then. James kind of that guy who sleeps on a book and thinks he learns it? Oh, yeah, exactly. Thinks he learns it? <laughs> Boom. I can speak four languages. <laughs> you should watch it. Ich bin ein... Gut. <laughs> I am a good. One good. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Man. Uh, hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Nihau. Aloha. Nihau. Yeah, but I, I didn't want to go Nihau. And uh, choose and such. What's more amazing is how much he retains when he sleeps on a documentary that's playing on his TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know so many useless animal facts. <laughs> you guys want to know how birds mate? Yes. Name a bird. Bird. Any one bird? Don't say duck. Well, no, ducks are terrifying yes. evolutionary rapist machines. Um, hummingbirds. How oh, hummingbirds mate? Do you actually know this? They don't do it in flight. That's almost disappointing, actually. I guess you wouldn't want it. That'd be like us doing it while walking. You wouldn't want to do it the way that you do Speak it all the time. I would want to do it any which way I could. Fuck yeah. I only walk when I have places to be. I would want to take my time. My place. I'm my girlfriend's place to be. right here. The G spot. Oh place. What? I have one place to be. The G spot. Boom! It's gonna say it's that a, pussy. It's a bar that opened on White Ave. Oh. Yeah, it's a great bar. Mine was much more crude. It stands head. for grape. The grape spot. It's just a bunch of grape drinks. You can't say that. I can't say grape? Drink. Oh. Where do you guys want to go now? Um, I feel like our only lead left to chase is Edward Hartwell. Our only lead? The goddamn park! I don't want to go there until we have all the facts. Edward might lead us to the park. Being like, yes, you crazy investigators, come with me to the place where she was injured. Or he might go nuts and try and kill us. Yeah, okay, let's see Edward Hartwell. How do you spell that, babe? <laughs> Ricky, Ricky G, thanks so much for the follow. We appreciate it. Welcome to the goddamn table. <laughs> Great. H-A-R-P. Washburn. Let me see the F G H. Can't word. Who's the other Washburn? Hopkins. Is there a Wilkinson? I feel like this is kind of It's distracted. Yeah, because they had. I feel like Eric should have had the directory. There's a curious. He's looking up his last name. <laughs> I feel like there's the a Emperor William J. Hmm? I feel like the Emperor property and then the unvisited aisle are gonna factor in. I hope so. I hate the unvisited aisle. There's always people on the unvisited aisle, and they're always crooks. Hartwell E L twenty six. Oh wait, there was a street they mentioned. Fuck. Um, East Salton Stall Street. And that okay. does include L... No, it doesn't. 26. Sorry, East what street? East Salton Street. Oh, there we go. L26. Yep, right yep, there. there. That's where you're going? Yeah. Bing. We're going to Eduardo, my friend. McGrath. Edward Hartwell's house, home is average and unassuming. A cat draws your attention as you step forward to knock on the door. Aww. The mangy feline is backing away from a basement window. The poor creature's eyes are wide and its back is arched hair standing on end. Aww. It's hissing in the most fearsome way. You knock on the door and when there is no reply, you knock again. As minutes tick by, you decide that a closer inspection of the rear of the property might be in order. After all, if his lady was injured, there is a chance that someone may have attempted to injure Edward Hartwell as well. The yard at the back of the building is well tended and the fence is new, uh, new and painted. The back door is unlocked. Stealing inside quickly so you're not observed, you find yourself in a clean and tidy kitchen. The cutlery and plates are neatly washed and stacked on the drawing board. The attention to tininess continues in each room. A pile of mail addressed to Edward Hartwell sits on a small table near the front door. Remembering the cat, you discover a small cellar door in the kitchen and head down to the basement where a bare, flickering bulb illuminates a small workroom. Discarded under a workbench is a small, broken packing crate stamped with the Miskatonic Museum's address. 
Bitch, he stole that artifact. On the bench lies a wickedly sharp, straight-bladed dagger etched with unusual symbols on its wooden hilt. The razor-sharp blade reveals flecks of red stain. Next to the dagger is a bowl, also stained dark red. Your stomach lurches at the uncomfortable thought that these are implements that injured the woman at the hospital. A few pieces of old parchment with indecipherable crabbed handwriting lie scattered nearby. Placed next to the parchment is an open box containing four large grain seeds. Each is about the length of your fingernail and jet black. Leaving everything as you found it, you exit property the way you came. You also find a note of importance as well. Oh my god. No! There, there was something about, they said it looked like he was trying to remove something. See? Oh, Was that a, a seed? I it said CI. A seed that was inside her? Or was he trying to put it into her? <coughs> uh, you're, you can't actually die in this one tiger planet, so they can't die in this uh, one. Joke's on you, I visit M. Yep, deep into the river we go. <laughs> I'm just like, fuck, he took What does the rainbow. note say, Chief? I am glad it all went as planned. I will arrive in town Sunday by train and meet you at B's Diner. I will collect it from you there, so be sure it's kept warm. Sunday what? Sunday by train. That's it? No time? You don't need to. We get to keep this, right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't get it for the final quiz, though. The only oh. thing you get for the quiz is this and the rule book. And this. And that. But that's more for scorekeeping, not answering questions. Yeah. Pirate King, yes. Ah, this is to Edward. Yeah, this is to Edward. Make sure it is kept warm. I'm it. It's watermelon. Oh, oh that's why you get seedless. Is. That's why you get seedless, otherwise Edward stabs you and takes the seeds. Oh my god, it's a watermelon-related conspiracy. Yeah, he was just worried that just... she ate a watermelon seed. And so he took it out of her, he got four yeah, out he's of like, her. You'll grow, see how you'll, big those pips were? You'll grow a watermelon out of you. That's no good. Okay. okay. How locations have you visited? Six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool, just make sure I had the right time. We never did figure out what the artifact Sorry, was, time. hey? That he took? It, it's was the it the blade? It was it's the blade? Stone. I just wanted to make sure we it's were all on board. The blade. I wanted yeah. to make sure we were all on board Or with it's that. the black seeds. Either one, we're good. I think it's the dagger. I think it's the dagger, too. Um, so I guess we should go to the museum. Do we want, do we want to? Well, because we already know the dagger comes from the museum. So there might not be any additional... We don't know the dagger comes from the museum. Okay. Um, because... We don't. Well, then we can go ask. No, good story. Carry on. Um, okay, but I didn't want to interrupt you again. No point. I will kill you. <laughs> so we can ask what it's for. We can ask what the... Because it had stuff engraved on the handle. Yeah. Right? Fair so fair. if it's used for a ritual, we can find out what, that ritual what is. the ritual is. Because they're doing a whole exhibit on but it. But shouldn't we just go to this place where these guys are? But we don't know. It... On Sunday. The day, that doesn't really matter for okay. this one. Yeah. yeah, it's more just like the events. And this is this is fucking this is beginner's mode. I know, but like. No, I agree. I'm Let's like real music. upset you at this back, point. Can you just move your chair in a bit? You can lean back. Just move your chair. In a bit. I'm I just want to see your face. Really upset at this point that there aren't requirement cards and stuff because I feel very lost without that visual or physical. Like, I've accomplished this, you know I mean, what I mean? Here, get your little sticker book. Well, no, I don't mean... Get your little sticker book. You're number book. one. Thanks, Dad. My dad's dead. That might be true. His family might say he was dead. Nobody knows. It, oh my god, can you know like someone who was actually here to the phone fly? <laughs> wow, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> So, um, you would like to go to the Miskatonic? I say, uh, yes, if we get any better leads, go from there. Otherwise, I'm curious to go to Bee's Diner. Behave, uh, behave, behave, behave 916, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome I to the goddamn table. I often do that to Wendelin, where she's like, okay, stop interrupting me, and then I'm like, okay, then I'll stop interrupting you to interrupt her, and I've never realized how annoying it was until you did that right now, and it just made me want to kill you. So it's good to know. I'm never doing that again. Never. Oh man. Live by my example, Eric. 
<laughs> um, so You'll know, I also did not break my leg. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna die. <sighs> Don't drive me home tonight. Don't get in that car. Um, can we go to the Miss Conk Museum? Let's go to the tattoo parlor and get matching tattoos, guys. Investigators. Put them together. Investigators. Tours. We need a fourth. <laughs> there he is. Sorry, I already got my team tattoo. No. <laughs> it turns out to be the same one. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> we walk in and the guy's like, ah, you want the investigators, don't you? Yeah. Where's your fourth? Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right. You All guys right. want to go? You want to go to the museum? Yeah. museum? Yes. I feel like it's a good call. That's at the Miskatonic U, right? Um, What's it called? Miskatonic Museum. Miskatonic Museum. Yeah, so University of Miskatonic. Exhibit Museum. Exhibit Museum. Could you imagine if there was a really cheap way to skip half this game? Because if we go here, they're going to be like, Oh, yes, the dagger. The dagger stolen by that young woman. It actually Edward. is... We've, we've gone ahead and missed one and like skipped a few and it actually makes it harder to fill up the paces that you missed. No, that's fair. Mm. I'm just saying it would be so funny. What the fuck is the name of the museum? I would love to be Stika. Try looking up Miskatonic Exhibit Museum in the... the uh, it also might be under Museum. There might be more. Stika. Oh, so what, you mean in here? No, in the actual... Like, Miskatonic... Stika. Okay. Miskatonic yeah, Club, one. University Garage, Valley Savings, Beauty, Social Parlor. There's no museum here. There might, there might be more sections. Residential, local, newspapers, medical facilities, no museums. Residential, restaurants, hotels, local life. Local oh, life. music. Oh, let's go to the speakeasy. Fuck. It has been mentioned, but no. I just want. There's a speakeasy in Edmonton. I'll take you there. Oh, the one I'm wearing. Local at. culture. Yeah. University Exhibit Museum, C24. Fun fact, um, you're supposed to give a password, but, like, I didn't. I, like, walked up and I was like, I think I'm supposed to be here? And they were like, yeah, okay. That's the password. <laughs> Confusion is the password. <laughs> Please let me in. I think my friends are inside. C24. The University Exhibit Museum is closed, so the iron-studded doors are fastened tight. On a hunch, you head around the side of the building to the loading dock. Wow, there are we several, are investigators. There are several <laughs> workers and a policeman lingering on the dock. The policeman has taken statements from two men dressed as watchmen. To one side, nervously pacing as an academic type in a dust-covered suit. You approach the academic who introduces himself as Dr. Robert Gladding, a junior curator with the museum. I can't believe this has happened. The exhibit was going to be the thing that secured me the job of senior curator. Now Richard is going to get the post for sure. As he rings his hand, you learn that both he and Richard Jedry, the other junior curator, have been competing for the vacancy of a senior position. Both were given exhibits to display. A well-respected curator is arriving from Boston to present the board with his opinion as to which man should be promoted. That's the guy who's going to meet at the beat How do you spell Richard's last name? J-E-D-R-Y. Ah, oh, sweet. That's how we spelled it. Who would steal a 12th century ritual bowl except someone wishing to sabotage my exhibit? It's not worth anything to anyone despite its age. These were, there, uh, there were very few people who even knew of the bull's arrival. Just the University Museum uh, staff and the staff of rare books and maps. What will Mr. Ingram think? I better send a message over to the Bancroft Arms to let him know. With that, Gladding hurries away. It's motherfucking Ingram. Ingram is the senior guy arriving. What was the other, the book thing? I can't answer that question, James. Wait, you can't? Didn't it say? It's implied, yeah. But I can't just answer that question. Oh, no. What, what question? The question is, is Ingram the senior curator that's so coming he there? Said, he said, uh... Yeah, sorry, read that again. A well-respected curator is arriving. Having... And then he later said, what will Mr. Ingram think? Okay. Rare books and maps. Rare books and maps. And do you have Bancroft arms? No, Bancroft? Bancroft. Bancroft. Ban I was not expecting it to be the bull. Rollins. No H, though. Maps. Uh, no H, Dr. Rollins. Dr. Ingram. Yep. 
Mr. Victor Ingram is scheduled to arrive in Arkham any day now. As senior creator for the Boston Museum, Mr. Ingram is scheduled to arrive. So <laughs> it was either this richer guy. I screwed up, but I thought I'd just stick with it. It's either this Richards guy, who knows about the bull, or Ingram. But I think Ingram, because he's trying to pick up the bull. Ingram is there to judge who gets um, the senior position. Yes, but I think Ingram is the guy who probably hired Edward to get the bull and do the ritual sacrifice. I think we need to go to Bancroft Arms to figure out about this knife. Wait, what was that about Bancroft Arms? Can you read us a bit about Bancroft Arms? Uh, I'd better send a message over to the Bancroft Arms to let them know. That the bull was stolen? Yeah, just to let them know what's happened. Oh. The bull. Not the knife. The bull. Let's go to Bee's Diner. Just on a tangent. We might... There's no requirements. Time doesn't really matter. Let's well, go to we're going Bees. back in time to Sunday? We get more days out of this. Uh, to me, this is like a flavor fail. It should just be all. Yeah. 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 So day three is now Sunday. It's all Sunday. Sunday. That morning. is the best dessert. Yeah, Sundays. All Sunday. Yeah. No, I prefer a banana split. It's because you can only have the banana. And coconut bliss ice cream. Yep. Yeah. Actually, I've had a banana split. It was amazing. Coconut bliss ice cream is very good. It really is. It's not ice cream if it's dairy treat, which you also can't have. All right, where are you guys going next? I'm going to stop James from doing his tangent here. You want to go to Bancroft Arms? No, I want to go to Bee's Diner. And the park. And the speakeasy. And the tattoo parlor. And the school of positive thinking. It sounds like a cult. Yep. Are you sure? They did the killing. Is Rare Books and Maps like a store we could go to? Yep. Because then we can find out who works there that we can like tie to it. If you want to, yeah, sure. I'm still interested in seeing Bee's Diner, especially now that we know that that person's just waiting there, rotting slowly in their cubicle. All right, we can go to Bee's and then um, check Rares. out the Rare. Rare Books and Maps after. Okay, let's go to Bee's Diner. B -b 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 bees Diner. It sounds like, like a bees restaurant. Diner, right? It was for Justin, don't worry. It was a bad reference to something he often says. And he made no response. It's because I'm not trying to listen to you. Oh, it's residential, not restaurant. Restaurant. I was trying to get the uh, ah! location. Bees Diner is not a restaurant. It's a diner. Are there diners? There are! D9. Sorry? D9. D9. Are we gonna get denied at D9? It looks as though you oh. missed... It looks as though you missed the action by the time you arrive at B's diner. Fuck. A police wagon pulls away as you turn the corner. You spot Inspector Garrison standing with several uniformed officers inside the diner. The detective greets you with a nod. We got him thanks to the tip from Armitage. Edward Hartwell matches the description of the man that Keen saw fleeing in the scene of the attack last night. I placed Edward under arrest, but he wasn't being particularly cooperative, and things got violent. That said, I think he's going to end up in the sanitarium, to be sure. The nonsense he was babbling. We overturned chairs and smashed crockery scattered on the diner to tell the tale of his arrest. You ask if Hartwell had any suspi anything suspicious in his possession. Perhaps. He came in the diner with a small package, according to a waitress, but he met a man who called himself Victor and gave the package to that gentleman. The waitress overheard Hartwell's companion saying he had to rush off so he didn't miss his train. Garrison appears upset that Hartwell's contact evaded capture. My jurisdiction ends at city limits. That package is someone else's concern now. With a twinkle in Garrison's eye suggesting he's intending to follow the man with the package, he tips his hat and turns to speak with one of his officers. You realize that, you realize that Garrison wouldn't let, loose, uh, let a loose end like that to chance. I love Inspector Garrison. Damn. He became Inspector Armitage in my notes. Let's go to B&M train station. He said he was already gone. That's Vic... I bet that's Victor Ingram. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could be richer. I seriously, legitimately want to call this and answer the questions. I feel like I could solve the puzzle. Let's I'm, go to the park first. Let's... Yeah, let's do some more first. We still have time. It's fine. But it's a race! It's not. 
I would rather win mm -hmm. than worry about winning in the long run. Winning. Okay. Um, but hold on, before we go to the park, because I know we're doing that mostly to get him to stop from calling it. Uh, so he said Victor is gone. The train has already left the station. I guess so, yeah. Because otherwise I'd say we might want to even consider going to the train station. Yeah, he said, uh, he, um, my jurisdiction ends at city limits. That package is someone else's concern now. So it's implied that the train is gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... Edward Hartwell also was babbling nonsense, too. We can speak to him at the sanatorium. They said he'll go to the sanatorium. We can go and meet him there. He's like, no, he's currently in the cop car. Oh. oh. And time never moves forward in this, so he's always in that cop car. He was always arrested. He was... <laughs> <laughs> Ever since day one, he's been arrested. Yeah. This uh, does look like a real serial killer road map. It's very... I like it. It's yeah. the most pleasing notes to look at I've seen so far. Oh yeah, yours are so much nicer when I'm slowly sliding off the... <laughs> <laughs> really, like, this seems super disorganized. Stop tipping them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Touch my face. How Ooh. intimate. How... Wait. Would it make sense Vulgar. to go to Rare Books and Maps now? That, now that we know that it was probably Victor Ingram that was part of the stealing? Yeah. Well, yeah. Actually. Let's go to Rare Books and Maps. Let's do it. Got the time? I do think we need to go to the park at some point. Yeah. No. I'm pal I'm over it. I'm over the park. I tried. I want to go swing. You guys won't swing? You won't get tattoos? You won't go to the speakeasy? That's because we also So here's want what I swing. feel like is happening. We have two people, like two investigators that are 100% in it, and then one investigator who's 70% in it, <laughs> and 30% telling jokes. <laughs> Keeping the mood light. <laughs> Uh, this is a murder. Let's not uh, get too serious. So we're to rare books and maps? Yeah. Just give me the location when you have it. I would yeah. love to. I had it earlier. Rare books and maps. N24. N24. Find out if anything happens. We've not had a non-event yet. The small, wizened woman sits behind the counter at rare books and maps and squints over her half-moon spectacles. He described to her the theft from the museum. Yes, I might be able to help you with that, dear. I was asked by one of the junior curators of the museum to set aside several tomes of ancient mythology for him. He wanted to conduct additional research to make his latest exhibits ring with authenticity. You ask about the bowl that was taken from the museum, and the woman nods and pulls out a slim pamphlet from the... Title from Noctopus to Present. This is what that is what was taken then. They didn't tell me. Well, see here, that bowl is a Cathotha birthing dish from Central Europe, dating all the way back to the Crusades. Let me give you the spelling of Cathotha. Thank you, lady. She. Sh I saw you taking notes, so I figured I'd help. I'm not taking notes. She shows you a page with a hand-drawn pencil jokes. sketch of a bowl. It says here that the bowl is used in tribal ceremonies of certain depraved Germanic sects. Teutonic Knight. Man, I is, love Germanic sects. It, it is used to hold or protect a new life brought into this world through birth. Strange. It doesn't look big enough to hold a baby. Protect a new life. Brought on this earth? Mm -hmm. Bling. Bling. <laughs> Marley Rockstar, thank you so much for the follow. We appreciate it. Welcome to the goddamn table. So, so a junior curator talked to her, wanted ancient tomes, specifically about the bowl. <laughs> yeah. Just walked into rare books and maps. Where are your tomes? <laughs> and yes, you are ancient. It was, for, <laughs> it was for the birth of Cathatha, <laughs> of a Cathatha. It was a Cathatha birthing bowl. Yeah, protect me like browns or. Which I'm assuming is the seeds explaining the stab in her chest. Yeah. Teutonic Knight, because Germans. And the killing happened at night. Um, you have two jokesters now. 
That was just for him. It's infected. Uh, I want to let's call go it to the park. U sixty seven, please. If you're okay with that, or do you have another place? Hold on, is there another place you'd like to go? We're just no UFO. Bancroft Arms. Yeah, let's just check on Bancroft Arms. Yeah, I'm down with Bancroft Arms. Why? Why are we going there? Ingram was living there. He might have left something behind in his haste to escape. Oh, I thought it was, um, the university people said that they had to inform them. That the yeah, because that's where Ingram was staying. Oh, yeah, let's go, yeah. That's where Edward was staying? Ingram. 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 Yeah, okay. N34. Let's find out if that's an event. The Bancroft Arms Hotel is the kind of establishment you wouldn't associate with a visiting academic. It is strange to you that someone of apparent high standing at the Boston Museum would be willing to hang his hat in such a cheap hotel. Stepping into the poorly lit lobby, you ring the bell. It is answered eventually by a sweating man in a stained shirt. Without That's looking me. at you, he snorts and pushes the ledger in your direction. That's me. We only have single beds, 90 cents a night. You push aside the ledger and ask him about Victor Ingram. He protests about the anonymity, anonymity of his clientele, and you slam your palm down violently on the desk. Insisting you are a friend of Victor's there to retrieve his belongings. So all three of us did it at once and then insisted we were, we are friend of Victor's. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this simple intimidation tactic has a desired effect and tosses you a passkey and mutters, Room 29, why don't you clean up the mess while you're up there? Ooh. I like how he has more, uh, like, respect for privacy than... Than everyone else, yeah. yeah. Well, no, because that's the other people The boarding women. house. Oh, yeah, oh. Right, right. 1929. 1929. Room 29, mm -hmm. coincidence, is in such a state that it must have been vacated in a hurry. You search every nook and cranny, and under the mattress you find a sheaf of no paper. The paper seems to be text hand-copied from a book. You find page after page of neatly copied entries. The pages describe a ritual of the cult of Shubnigarath, a very gruesome act to bring a spawn into our world using a grain of seed consumed by a human. Once the spawn is incubated in the host, it will eventually be cut free and released. The host is then sacrificed, and the blood of the victim is used to nourish the spawn. A few of the pages reveal sketches of artifacts used in the ritual. You recognize these as the things you've seen. Okay. Sorry. Spawn swallowed by a host. Nerf. Um, what, what, what was it? Grown? And yeah, it's incubated and eventually cut free and released. The host is then sacrificed. It's like a really shitty alien. Like, it can't get out of its sex. So you gotta and the blood that. of the victim is used to nourish the spawn. And then that cup is used to protect the baby. Yeah. So they want to keep it. Because um, they grow up so fast. They do. They just turn into giant dark youngs. Here's the deal. I could cry right now. We need Hank I'm Samson right now. Sam. Where's my par? <laughs> Where's my par? No, Hank, listen to us. Where is he? <laughs> There's par. Uh, do we want to hit up the park? What for? We already know everything. How do yeah. you feel? Yes, I want to head up the park. <laughs> park! Oh, 267? Can we make note that I wanted to call it on day three, sure. section two? Sure. And then we'll just go back and see how much information we had. Uptown Park, much like the rest of the district, is well maintained and pleasant. The southwestern corner is heavily wooded, but you first explore the open areas. There is no sign of the police. You decide to leave the wooded corner for last, Patently aware of the warning that the trees are alive. Unlikely, you admit, the thought does not rest well in your mind. Your search of the open areas is conducted quickly. The wooded area rises slightly, and in the trees you notice the crumbling remains of a building, all but overgrown. In a clearing beside the building, you discover a dark stain on the earth. Blood. A rustle of the trees catches your attention, and then suddenly your blood run cold, runs cold as the stench, akin to an open grave, reaches your nostrils. You turn in the direction of a noise. You instantly recoil in horror as one of the trees surrounding the clearing moves into view. Or are you hallucinating? No. Nope. But the tree did move. The thing is near, near 16 feet tall, ink black, with branch-like tentacles that reach for the summer sky. You are frozen, fearful, and, ta and a taste of bile in your mouth. Vomit rising in your throat. You flee, heart pounding out of your chest. Running from the territorial monster, you run for two full blocks. No, this cannot be. Your imagination has gotten the better of you. But it was so clear. The thing was moving. The dread books that Armitage has let you glimpse to con do contain, could they contain truth? 
You shake yourself out of your stupor and sit down to gather your senses and calm your nerves. You can feel it in your bones. Sinisters, horrors await the citizens of Arkham. Let's call it. Let's call it. Unless you feel there's more you'd like to do. Because I was having a good time telling jokes, but now there's vomit in my mouth and I'm terrified. <laughs> How do you feel? Do you want to hit one more thing or do you want to... I also want to say flavorfully that's an awesome place to end. Although, I wonder which curator it was. It was Ingram. No, the junior curator. Well, we met one of the junior curators. Yeah, and the other one was Richard. And the other one was Richard. And since he didn't know anything about it, I'm assuming it's Richard. If you if you want, we'll take one more action to confirm it. Wait, what? No, what do we need to confirm here? That, that it was Richard who was part of it, just in case the question asked. No, was Ingram before. was part of it. Yeah, so Ingram is the guy Head from curator. Boston. Yeah. But they said a junior curator came to the rare books and maps and was asking about the bowl. So it's one of those two. Was the guy who wanted to, he who gave us the info to go there. He was studying for his exhibit and the only piece, he was trying to, he said that piece is worthless, people don't know about it, so he was trying to add flair to it. Um, um, and... So it was whatever the guy we spoke to. It was the guy we spoke to. Robert Rick. Gladding. It was Robert Gladding. Because the other guy, they were trying to make you think there might be a rivalry. And then maybe, I think the point is to make you think that maybe it's him and not Ingram. Who's trying oh. to sabotage him. Oh, okay. That's fair. Well, let, let's see. You're going to call it? Yeah. So from now, you cannot look at the newspaper or this book. What about this book? That is fine. Nice. All right, so Eric, you're going to write down the answers to these questions. Okay. And then how it works is I'm going to give you the answers, and then you guys can give yourself points depending on how good you guys think you did for getting them. We give ourselves points? Yes. Just be fair. Everyone's been quite good about it. Hey, but you guys, are pretty, you guys did pretty good. Question one. What is the name of the woman who collapsed in the street? It's Martha, Martha. Modine. Is spelling graded? Uh, you guys got it. If you guys know, if you guys can say it. It's more so that it's just an easy reference. Yeah. Number two. Who was the suspicious character that made a quick exit from the scene of the crime? That's Edward, Edward Hartwell. Edward Hartwell. Get wrong on. All right. How did the woman come by her injury? Knife. And she got Knife. stabbed when they were trying to harvest the, uh, yeah. the seed. Yeah, I would say set, ritual they, sacrifice. If you do it like point form, because I like, heard you guys answer. Yeah. So just like a ritual sacrifice with knife. Yeah, to yeah. collect seed in chest probably happened <laughs> several days ago at this point. <laughs> five days. Make cool. Yeah, so just put like ritual knife yeah. snap, and we'll know what that means. Yeah. Ritual knife, etc. <laughs> etc. <laughs> what is the danger in the park? It, that's a uh, dark yell. It's a dark yell. It's tree. It's tree. Tree. Big tree. It's big. Big, um, big tree. What was stolen from the museum? Uh, the birthing bowl. No. I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. Do, now, mm, it was the birthing bowl. There's like a specific name. What's it there? Like. Yeah, I can't. Thotha. I can't. I can't. Thotha. Birthing. Bowl. I can't pronounce that. That's why I said birthing bowl. Oh. Who was the out-of-town cultist of Shubby? That was Ingram. Yeah, Victor Ingram. I'm going to spell it with a K. Is it with a K? Victor Ingram. Um, I've said with a C, but whatever. It is a C, but... He's no, way it's a K. More, he's way more. He goes by Victor, but he goes by Victor. Why did the cat hiss at the wall on East Saltonstall Street? Um, it could feel the... Dangerous magic stuff happening inside. Yeah, it could feel the seeds on the inside. Yeah. Which is might maybe why it was also freaked out by Edward as well. Because Edward had an unnatural presence with him. Was it yeah. the dagger or was it the seeds, do we think? Seeds. We didn't find that out. But seeds, I What if we put yeah. dagger and seeds? Um, as a teacher, you would mark the first one you put down. Okay. So you would oh. choose dagger and seeds or seeds and dagger if you I want both? I said seeds. Okay, let's do seeds. That's funny, because I never even thought that would be a question. Now, hold I don't on, think though. Right. Are with the seeds themselves Because it's in heat. Dangerous? Yeah, because they're, they're the things 
that yeah spawn. you have to gestate yeah you have to gestate them first though yeah before they become dangerous and these ones aren't gestated well the bowl is also down there no the knife was so is and it, the bowl and the bowl it was all down there oh. put seeds okay oh we don't want to put bowl no i want to say okay. seeds i'm sorry it's yep. specifically the seeds that are going to be evil Okay. All right, number eight. Who do the hospital workers see on the top floor of the Emperor home? Oh, son of a bitch. I thought that was a wild goose chase. Uh, there's multiple storylines for points. Depends on how thorough you guys did for everything. Oh, so who do they... What's the question? Who did the hospital workers see on the top floor of the Emperor home? Uh, they saw Edward Hartwell. Sure. This is what we usually do when we don't know the answer. <laughs> just like, let's just put this guy... <laughs> He was probably there. Well, you guys ready for this one? What was Barclay Rutger up to? <laughs> Fucking hanging out. Uh, uh, so there aren't points for finishing early? Uh, it's number of locations you visit. So for uh, when I get to how many locations Armitage visited, you're going to deduct points for how many you went over his. Mm -hmm. But this is the majority of the scoring. Okay, what Sorry. was Barclay Rutger up to? Unless, unless answer number eight was Barclay Rutger and he was up there. What was he up to? Yeah, what was he up to? Oh, damn, I was about to reference the newspaper. Um, I know. Oh, he was probably on the unvisited aisle. Is that a bad guess? No. It's a guess. It, it did come up. He was it? fishing. <laughs> he I don't know, man. Was. Okay, so I've got fishing an unvisited aisle. Yeah, that's. I'm assuming he was fishing at the unvisited aisle. I'm gonna put unvisited aisle. <sighs> what was he up to? The unvisited aisle. That's not an answer. Okay, fine. Let's make something smarter than fishing then. What's smarter than fishing? Teach a man to fish. He'll eat for a lifetime. I'm not going to talk to you right now. Um, <laughs> I don't have anything for this. I'm sorry. Let's think. I Let's... thought this was how we scored. Me too. Yeah, you were really pushing that. Yeah, that's no, because... I said there were questions, which what? were the... I said there was a bunch of questions you had. Yeah, but I, I thought... I could tell he was focused on beating you guys in terms of I your thought speed that's time. This is how you beat us. Yeah. Yeah, see, I thought that we beat you by this. No. So... I wish we'd known that there were multiple streams we were supposed to follow. That's really good to know for the next game. I'm very there, excited. These ones are usually only worth one or two points. Oh, okay. Uh. Well, what do we want to say Rutger Barclay was doing? Barclay Rutger. Rudger Barclay. Um, was he maybe why the cat was hissing? No, we would have seen him in the house. Yeah. No, the cat was, the cat was hissing at the wall. He was hissing at us. No, the cat hissing was hissing at the house because it was backing away from the Open basement window. Because it was going to eat a seed, and then it was like, no, that's evil. Apparently. Apparently. My bad. I was. Um, I was. Focused, I want to say unvisited aisle. He was like, doing. Mystery shit on the invisible. <laughs> mystery invisible. shit? Mystery shit. We would give ourselves zero points for mystery shit. <laughs> fishing's worth at least one. Okay, fishing. No, don't put fishing. I don't know. We need an answer, guys. Mystery shit. This is what we spend the next two days <laughs> talking about. What was he doing on the unvisited We don't know he was on the unvisited aisle. We are all agreeing we're assuming he's on the unvisited aisle, right? What was he doing there? What if he was the guy in the hospital? And that's why this is a reference to that. What hospital thing? The, what, the what? one we assume was Edward Hartwell. He was up on top of the building. Oh. Even um, though that's, in retrospect, a really dumb answer because he's perpetually arrested. He's been perpetually arrested. Yeah. No, so was what that. was Barclay Rutger oh. doing in the hospital? Creating lights. What was he doing, guys? What was he doing in the hospital creating lights? Uh, he was crazy from the trees. Answer. Crazy from the trees. That's worth at least one, I think. That's fair. That's worth zero because we should, it's a shot in the dark, but I think that's our best answer. Crazy from the trees. Question 10. What was the name of the late night graveyard visitor? What the... Good, good question. In, good all, question. in all fairness, no one has gotten this question, the one before or the one after, right? We can refer to this? No, yeah, it's not in there. That's can we put Shubnigarath? I'm not going to write that. Um, 
And Shubby, can we push Shubby? Why was Shubby visiting a graveyard? Shubby is an extra-dimensional space being that is apparently getting its children in through seeds. If it was here, it would just be impregnating us. Yeah. Who was visiting? Richer. BP Nave, thank you so much for the follow. We appreciate it. Welcome to the goddamn table. I have no idea. Do we want to say it was Richard Jerdy? Jedry? Yeah, Jedry. sure. Richard sure. Jedry. Why not? Oh, right. we're digging up corpses for the exhibit. He was. He was going to test the dagger on Well, corpses. here we go. Why did the late night graveyard visitor visit at night, and what was he doing? Digging up corpses. Digging <laughs> up corpses. For his exhibit. We'll just say corpses. Why? Yeah. Exhuming corpses. Last question. Yeah. Uh, what is the word scrawled all over the emperor home? I wanted to go there. I, I fucked up. I'm sorry. You didn't fuck up. I'm going to say it's... Um, Cathola. Cathola. Well, what's, what, was the, what was that home? Who was living there? It just said... Oh, fudge. It just said the owners of the emperor home, I thought. Yeah, and what were they involved in? Where are they in your notes? They're not there. What was the word scrawled all over it? I'm going to say Shub Negarath. Yeah. Shubby. Shubs. I swear there wasn't... It didn't say a specific person who owned it. It just said the owners. Okay. What's it, what is the Emperor home? Is that a hotel? No, that's the... Oh. Are we allowed to look at that? Yeah, we're allowed to look yep. at this. I just assumed it was like a mansion. <sighs> oh, the Emperors are people. It's not like an establishment. Yeah, it's like an ancestral home. No, they're just people. Not even ancestral. What was the word scrawled all over it? Um, yeah, I'm down to say Shubnigarath. Sure. I sure. try to slow that as much as I can. Shubby. Shubby. I mean, if you say it, it's a word in fiction. Yeah. If it feels uncomfortable, but... Alright, you guys ready? Yes. yes. Give Eric that red pen. You guys are going to give yourself some points. Fourth, a total of possible three points... The name of the woman who collapsed in the street is Martha Modine. Three points. Three points. Um, who was the suspicious character that made a quick exit? Three um, points. Edward Hartwell for up to five points. Five points. I think we nailed that. Uh, how did the woman come by her surgery? Five For five points, the ritual extraction of the spawn of Shub Niggerath. Five points for that, guys. You guys have that one. Yeah. What is the danger in that comes? Uh, what is the danger in the park? A tree that comes alive is worth one point, or if you knew the name, Dark Young, three points. Yes. Nice. What was stolen from the museum? A ritual bowl for one point, or a Cathotha birthing dish for two points? Uh, who was the out-of-town cultist of Shubby? Mr. Ingram for two points. What if we got his first name? No, just two points maximum. Okay. Um, why did the cat hiss, cat hiss at the wall of the East Saltonstall Street? It was sensing the seeds of Shubby in Edward's basement for one point. Good nice. Point. Um, why did the, who did the hospital workers see on the top floor of the Emperor home? Members of the Silver Twilight Lodge. Oh, oh, oh damn. No, no, no! So, zero points. What did Barclay Rucker get up to? <laughs> so, he was on the Unvisited Isle, and he was drinking with friends for a possible three points. What did you guys have? Crazy, Crazy from the trees. Oh, zero points. See, uh... Trees, uh, IPAs, <laughs> uh, drinking. No, I'm sorry, guys. That was me. I let us away from that, and I apologize. That's okay. It was a... These were shot in the darks. So, uh, what was the name of the late night visitor? Thomas Ilsley. Yeah, Nailed zero it. Zero points. Uh, what was he doing? Why was he visiting at night? He suffers from insomnia, and he was conducting research for a book. For zero, was it zero. exhuming corpses for a book? <laughs> close, though. Um, why? What was the word scrawled over the emperor home? You were very close. It was Nyarlathotep. So of course it was, because it's the silver twilight. Okay, that's fair. That's All fair. right. Um, add up your score. It's 10, 15... Uh, 21. Uh, if you visited Uptown Park, encountering the Dark Young, deduct one point from your score. Why? Uh, I told you guys to For mental trauma, as you try to convince yourself that your imagination got the better of you. That's very reasonable. Uh, count the number of locations you visited. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Subtract one point for every location beyond 7. That's 4. 
Sixteen is good. Sixteen points. You win. On the following page, you may view the locations Armin had visited. Um, in the end, a simple mystery. Back in Armitage's office, you feel the legwork of the week was far from simple. Garrison reclining near the open window in a leather winged back chair gives you a look that implies he agrees with you. Garrison says there was the question of the woman's identity to wrestle with Henry. That seems like the most pertinent fact that we were missing from the start. Armitage nods. Indeed, that was forefront in my mind as well, Inspector. And once I had visited her room at Rennie's boarding house, I was able to put a name to our young lady, Miss Martha Modine. Garrison looks perplexed. What on earth led you up to French Hill to the Rennie house? Armitage grins. Alas, Inspector, so wrapped up were your officers and dorted our solicitations over the identity of the young lady, they neglected her possessions. Her receipt from the boarding house clearly showed that she intended to stay there for another month. This then led me to, a f to the fiend Hartwell in his lair, so clean and tidy. Garrison shrugs grudgingly, an admission that a focus on surrounding streets was the wrong call given the circumstances. Well, what happened to her then? Why did that villain Hartwell attack the woman he professed to love? That, Inspector, perhaps we'll never fully comprehend. Mr. Edward Hartwell had a lover, had a lover greater than uh, he professed to hold for Martha. There was a special bond between the two, but Edward was held thrall to dark powers beyond our world. The rantings he uttered upon his arrest were testament to that. His love for the unspeakable evil of, of Shubby outweighed even his fondness for the lovely Mrs. Miss Modine. He must have been planning for some time, slipping one of those damnable seeds into Martha's food where it wriggled its way into her chest cavity, there to grow and feed on her like a parasite. Martha was the unknowing host of this evil inside her. I must admit that Weasel Pascal was of some use there, and it confirmed what I had learned from reading Ibon in the library. Um, a lingering memory of his feelings for Martha must have prompted Edward in remorse to redress her and lay her out to expire rather than complete the prescribed sacrifice. It is likely that the secretions of the spawn, that foul mucus, stayed the, stayed the blood full for a short time and dulled the pain. As the influence of the spawn waned after its removal, it is clear Martha awoke and was able to stagger back to the street to try and help. Try and find help. Garrison interjects suddenly. Why the attack in the park then? Surely he was taking a risk in such a public space. Armitage pauses and then only responds. It would seem the ritual needed to be overseen by a watcher, a dark young, shove Nigarath's blasphemous child where could one of these evil creatures hide an Arkham butt in the heavily wooded park. He needed to conduct the ritual outside. What risk was there in the overgrown part of Uptown Park? With a slice and a snap of bones, he was able to free the unholy spawn and store it in the Cathotha birthing dish that was taken from the museum. That is, until he could transfer it to the more secure bindings and hand it off to his friend, Victor Ingram. It is a shame that you missed him, Inspector. Garrison nods at the suitcase next to Armitage's desk, that twinkle back in his eye. Aye, a shame. Seems like you and I have a trip to make in the morning. Unfinished business. Uh, Armitage has solved this investigation by visiting these seven locations and making a reasoned deduction that the bowl was used in the ritual. Arkham Hospital, Orrin Library, Muse uh, University Exhibit Museum, Pascal Fenton, Herbert Corbett, Rennie's Boarding House, and Edward Hartwell's House. Okay, interesting. I think you and we got like a very similar score. That man is efficient, though. Holy. Yeah. Balls. Well, he's not answering the questions. He's just solving the mystery. Oh, right? fair enough. Sorry, I didn't read. I should have read through all these with everybody so that we yeah. could have also. If you guys had heard of Pascal Fenton, you probably would have. Um, he said the same thing that the librarian said. Uh, yeah. Fair. The next one, flesh and blood. Ooh, this Jesus. one, you guys, we got a hundred percent for the questions on this one. So.